Hello everyone, welcome to this video about flowing over minor chords. I've made a quite popular video about how to flow like a pro on dominant chords and I was introducing the loops concept and I made other loops videos, also one for minor. But in this video I'm gonna go back to the basics and I will explain that after this intro. So the idea is to play an arpeggio up and a scale down. And for the dominant loops that resulted in playing a diminished arpeggio up. So for example for E7 I play a uh, diminished arpeggio up. And then I would play an altered sounding scale down. Something like that. Now for minor we can do the same thing. And I was just messing around searching for handy fingerings and I think I've come up with what might be the beginning of a system, we'll see. And uh, let's just dive into the lines and I'll explain the, the thinking about it while I'm demonstrating the lines. So let's go to the first line. And these lines will fit over any minor chord. A minor 7, A minor 6, A minor major 7, or just A minor. And the idea is we're gonna play a C major 7 arpeggio up, and there's three ways to do it, and then we're gonna play a minor scale down, and those scales will be different, and it's mostly based on convenient fingerings, not so much on what minor scale it is. Doesn't matter which minor scale you're gonna play, it's gonna sound good on any type of minor chord. At least that's the way I view minor. So let's look at the first line, which sounds like this. One, two, Three, four. One, two, three, four. So C major seven arpeggio. And then this minor scale, which has the major seven in it, but you can play it over minor seven. The fingering is Pretty convenient, I think, because it's mostly 3-1, right? So 3-1, slide, 3-1, again 3-1, slide, 4-3-1, but there's 3-1 in it again, 3-1, and then I'm gonna end the scale in any way you want, you could just play chromatic or play uh, an enclosure like I writ I've written down here. So I wrote it down starting on beat 1, but it sounds even better when you would start on beat two like this. Three, four, one. But of course you can play it uh, at many different spots in the bar. You can start on beat three, on beat four. Now, the point of this line is to first practice it like it's written here. And I'm, I'm gonna show you how you could do that because there's a backing track on my channel called Modal Jazz A minor and G minor. It's basically uh, just two chords. It's A minor and it would switch to G minor. And of course in G minor we could play the same thing. Right, or we could play it high, like here. So you would just play this line as written, but you would also improvise with the line. And that would just mean that you would uh, maybe change the rhythms. Uh, you could maybe uh, repeat some notes, leave some notes out, start in the middle, right? You could start on this B. Stuff like that, and there's no system for that, that's just a matter of experimentation. So let me show you with this single line how you could improvise over the backing track. Just exactly the line. Let's improvise with it. G minor. A minor. Mm -hmm. 
like that. Let's go to the next line because uh, in the end it's about mixing all these lines. So starts exactly the same, same uh, fingering for the major seven arpeggio. One, two, three, four. <laughs> One, two, three, four. So instead of going to that high B, we're instead gonna go to the F sharp on the E string. So we're gonna go down to the six of A minor, A minor six, and F sharp. So we have two um, slides with the first finger, that's the way I look at it. Slide. Slide, and then again we get a bunch of three ones. Three ones, four, three ones. And then I'm gonna play chromatically. But you could end in any way you want. You could maybe just end on the low B and go up again. The ending is just nice, I like ending on that low six. Um, but improvisation would maybe push you another way. Uh, now you can combine these two lines in an improvisation like this. By the way, this line is not really possible to play in G minor low on the neck because we don't have enough frets uh, on the left side, but we could play it high. Take some time to get this fluency and you will make some mistakes with uh, fingerings but it is not as hard as it seems these fingerings are chosen are designed to make it as easy and quick as possible to actually memorize them to make them your own and the improvisation part mainly comes from experimenting let's go to the next one i have four lines in total we're going to move up on the neck and play the c major seven arpeggio starting here on the seventh fret but it's the same notes. So this line sounds like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Again, there's lots of three, one. I mean, that's on purpose. I like finding fingerings that involve a lot of 3-1 movements, just that creates some kind of consistency in my head. That's 4-2-1, that's but then we get 3-1, 4-3-1, 4-3-1, -3 and then the ending. Ending on the 6, but of course you could end uh, differently. Just end there or whatever. So now let's improvise with those three lines. Of course, for A, uh, for G minor would be here. Thank you. 
So I'm doing all kinds of combining also just moving from one shape to another. For example, if I play the A minor shape, why not go to the first shape by just moving my hand back? Right, I could even go to the second shape. And it's more about finding these connections through the fingerings, the, the easiness of the fingerings, and then listening if it sounds nice. And if it sounds nice, it's something maybe you should remember. But start with connecting the fingerings in smart ways, more so than searching for certain lines, because that might end up in um, resulting in fingerings that are not that handy, and that would mean that you probably never play it. So start with the fingerings, that's how I start, and then listen for stuff that you like and try to remember that. Let's go to the last line. So this is the third way to play the C major 7 arpeggio. And the line sounds like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now this fingering doesn't have the three one thing going. It's it's maybe more mix or maybe more two one even. Two one, three one, two one, two one. So I would store it like that. Like okay, this this one is different, right? The, all the other ones have lots of three one thing going. I would I would call that in lessons or workshops. I would call that a three one focus. And this one is more mixed. In G minor. And now we improvise with those four lines. So let's do that. Just like that, and you can go on forever because this backtrack is very long. Now, as a bonus, or maybe as a little extra, I put in some phrases to vary the C major 7 arpeggio. Let's take a look at those. Here's a way to vary the first shape. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It's basically just playing it up and down with this hammer on. So you could use this shape to vary the C major 7 before you go up to the scale. Like 
like that. Let's look at the next one. This is a way to uh, vary the same arpeggio, but now we're gonna go up all the way. One, two, three, four. Great little lick. Um, very good to get away from playing the skill down, now you can play arpeggio down. Like that. And then the uh, third way, it's basically the same as the first one, but now for this shape. One, two, three, four. Right, and then the fourth one is also the same as the second one, but now for this shape. One, two, three, four. So we have basically two uh, embellishments. Uh, this one in two different places. And this one also here. Now let's make a final improvisation using these embellishments and all the skill patterns. Now, and if I mix this with all my other regular stuff that I have for minor chords, right? Uh, there are many other videos with minor stuff, then I'm adding something that really provides a lot of flow. And of course, it's great to practice this on a backing track like this, like a modal backing track, but you can play this on tunes with long minor chords also. Maybe a tune like um, Joseph Joseph. Let me try that. Let me get Joseph Joseph backing track. And I'm gonna play that on the A minor parts. By the way, the, the links for both backing tracks are in the description. Let me see if I can make it work in that faster tempo. works on that tune as well. Of course, it's a little bit more complicated because there's other chords um, and it's fast. But the end result should be, after you've practiced for a while, that you can use this material on any tune with minor chords and even on dominant chords because, of course, when it's A minor, you can also use that stuff on D7. But that's a whole other video. Start working with uh, these, let's say, minor loops 
and uh, maybe I'm gonna make more videos using this kind of system, also with the three one fingerings for other chord types and other progressions. Hope you liked it. If you liked it, please give this video a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to my channel. If you want the tabs, you can download them from my Patreon and I will see you hopefully in the next video. Bye.